All right. So ladies, our topic for today's migratory patterns and our learning objective is that we're going to look at the migratory pattern and settlement of the indigenous peoples in the Caribbean up to the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1492. What this is asking us to do, before Christopher Columbus came or the Spanish came to the Caribbean in 1492, who lived in the Caribbean? What were they, their patterns? On which islands did they settle? All right. So these are some of the issues that we are going to look at. Now, where is the Americans? That is a question. Uh, Baker, Filet Baker, where is the Americans? Filet? Denton, Yannick Denton. Anyone would like to answer that question? Where is the America? They don't have to be shy to answer the question, I'm afraid. There is no right and wrong answer. Sir, yeah, are you talking like USA and stuff like that? USA, you are correct. You are not wrong. You are correct. Anyone else? Sir, Is sir, America. Sir, go ahead. Sir, I was saying most of the land in the Western Hemisphere are the countries in the Western Hemisphere. Most of the land in the Western Hemisphere, the Americas. Is the first time you're hearing the term the Americas? No, oh, sir. All right, good, good. So the Americas, ladies, is if you look on your map, the Americas is also called call or is also known as the Western Hemisphere. So the Americas include all of North America, Central America, if you follow my cursor, all of Central America, all of South America, and the Caribbean. Now, what we want to do is to find out who were the first set of people to inhabit or to live in the, this region of the world that is called the Americas or the Western Hemisphere. And what were their lifestyle? How did they live? What were some of their customs, their cultures, all right? So this is the area here. So the Americas is also called the Western Hemisphere. If we're looking at a definition, so the Americas is also called the Western Hemisphere. It includes North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. It's, so all of this area is called the Americas. All right. So, Excuse me, sir? Yes. Would you be sending um, this in the classroom? Google Classroom? What? Um, I will be posting the, the video in the Google Class. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, yes. Sir? Repeat? Yes. Can you go back to the, um, the objective for a second, please? Okay, thank you. All right, so let me know when you're through. So the, I can change it now? Yes, sir. Good. So ladies, the, all of this area is considered to be the Americas, right? And so we want to, we, we want to know their customs, 
of who would have lived in this region. Now, these are some very important terms that we need to know. Migration. So you're in your notebook, you're going to write these terms. Migration. Settlement. Migration. Settlement. Migration settlement indigenous pattern and Spanish. So for I know I have 10 minutes on the slide for five minutes, ladies, just use your phone, go on your phone, dictionary.com, and define these terms in your notebook. Migration. Settlement, indigenous, pattern, Spanish. Five minutes, ladies, to define those terms, all right? Sir, can you go back to the side of the objectives, please? You are through with the objective. Ladies, please raise your hand in the classroom when you are through with the object, with the definition.
Five minutes to define these terms. Migration, settlement, indigenous pattern, Spanish. All right, ladies. All right, so the first word, indigenous. First word I'm looking at, indigenous. When we talk about, when we use the word indigenous, what are we talking about? What does the word indigenous mean? So originating or occurring naturally in a particular place. Maybe. Repeat for me, please originating or occurring naturally in a particular place so we're going to originating all right anyone has a different definition very good excellent definition or indigenous anyone else williams gayla williams What's, yes. your, what's your definition? For indigenous? Yes. Originating or occurring naturally in a particular place. All right. So you have the same one. Very good. All right. So in, in, in other words, ladies, indigenous means is synonymous to first. So indigenous first originating. You are the first the person who actually are the group who originate in a particular space 
And so we want to look at the first set of people to live within the Americas. So the first people to settle in the Americas, the first people to settle in the Americas were actually called the Amerindians, right? They were called the indigenous people. These are all the different names that they are called by in history books. If you read several different history books, they'll be referred to as several different groups of people. Well, they were referred to as in different names. So one, indigenous peoples are also called Amerindians. They're also called Native Americans. They're also called pre-Columbian Indian or pre-Columbian people. They're also called Native Indians. These are all the different names that the indigenous people, they are actually known by, all right? So all the indigenous people, sorry, the indigenous, indigenous, the other names that they are known by are Amerindians, Native Americans, pre-Columbian Indian, some call them, some books are historians call them pre-Columbian people, Native, um, Native Indian. Anyone has ever been to Canada before? And anyone has ever been to Canada before? Yes, sir. When you're in Canada, you actually hear people talk about the Native Americans, correct? Yes, sir. And they're actually talking to Native Americans in Canada. They're actually talking about the indigenous people. So they are still indigenous people living in Canada today. Anyone here is from Dominica or no, has ever been to Dominica before? No one. In the Caribbean today, you have indigenous people still living in Dominica. The first people who would have, have lived in this part of the world, they are still living there in Dominica, in the United, parts of the United States and also in Canada. Now, what is settlement? What do we mean by the word settlement? Marcel, settlement. So, okay. man, sir, yes. a place typically one which has previously been in has previously been inhabited. So, as so so, in other words, a settlement is somewhere that is inhabited, right? Migration. What is migration? Denton. Migration. <laughs> migration is the movement of either people or animals from one area to another. From one area to another. So ladies, so in order for people to settle, the first people to settle in the Americas, they must move from a place somewhere they would have come from to settle in the Americas, right? They must come from somewhere unless God just create them and place them there. But we know for sure that they would have moved from somewhere to another place, all right? So right now, The indigenous people came, or the indigenous people migrated from Asia. If you look on my screen right here and follow the cursor, the indigenous people moved from Asia, that's where they were living, 
in Asia. And they cross the Bering Strait. So the Bering Strait is this area, right? So the indigenous people migrated from Asia and settled in the Americas. Now, ladies, the place in Asia, the place in Asia, if you look on my screen, screen right here and the cursor, the place in Asia where they migrated from is called Siberia. So that is the name of the place where they came from. So on the um thing that you sent in our email, it said Mongolia. We 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 come into that. You're correct. Thanks for pointing that out. So Siberia. So that is the name of the geographic space that they're from now ladies the people that live within siberia was called the people that lived within siberia was called the mongolian so there are some history book that will say Siberia, some will say Mongolia, because they are they are from it is a it is synonymous to the name of the place is synonymous to the the name of the people. All right. So Mongolia. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So the modern day Serbia, the people that live there would be Serbs and their old name is Mongolians. The, the, the current people that would have lived there would have been there. I, because right now that area is now Russia. You know, that's the name of the country. Yes, right? sir. So, and the Russians, are descendants of the Serbs. Descendants oh, okay, of the what? The Serbs. S E R B S. And we are not talking about the white Russians. Because Russia is a very vast country, vast country, very big country. So, it, so the persons who would have lived right along this area are persons who are their skin color would have been more yellow looking. Yellow looking. Sir, they would look more Asian. Yes, they would look more like Asian people. Yes, Asian. You are correct, ladies. So this is the. How did they cross the bearings? Before we go to, to the bearings here, we want, we want one thing we need to know, ladies, is that they would have came from this area, Asia, Mongolia, Siberia, same. Some history book have Eurasia. Okay. Same place, different name. And the modern day name today is Russia. So they would, so those. The first people would have crossed the Bering Strait. They came down. So all of this area right here is Alaska. So they crossed the Bering Strait, came to Alaska. And if you look at the different arrows, they would have settled at different parts in the Americas. 
as far as South America. Quite a lot of work here. And then they would have ventured into the Caribbean islands. Now the Bering Strait today, if you look on your map, the Bering Strait today is a body of water. The Bering Strait today is a body of water. So if the Bering Strait is a body of water today, we need to ask ourselves these questions. How did they cross the Bering Strait? Why did they cross the Bering Strait? What was the Bering Strait like at the time when they would have crossed? Anyone Sir? want to share? Yes. Sir, while they were crossing, they were going through the period of the fourth ice age. So that body of water was frozen. So it made a bridge for them to cross over. All right. Very good. Show that you're reading. Excellent. Anyone else? Sir, they crossed the Siberian land bridge. So you, also, you have the land bridge. So the land bridge was made up of what? Sir, ice. Land bridge was made up of ice. All right. Very good. Now we're getting anyone disagreed that they, anybody has say that, okay, they swim across. Nobody? All right. So the one thing, ladies, is that historians agree. There's one thing we know is that archaeologists, Archaeologists, historians both agree that the first people to settle in the Americas came from that region of the world, Asia. And they would, and the next thing that they both agree on, the next thing that they both agree on is that the they came across the Bering Strait. Now, during the Ice Age, ladies, during the Ice Age, during the fourth, the fourth Ice Age, during the Ice Age, there was a shortage of food and vegetation for animals and people. Because if they, the entire place is cold, then you're going to have problem when it comes to finding food and people. If the place is extremely cold, you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems finding food for both animals and people. So that is the first thing that we need to know. And the first people, they were actually hunters. The first people, they were actually hunters. And so, the, so they followed their animals are herd of deers who were searching for food across the Bering Strait. So the first people, they followed herd of deers who were searching for food across the Bering Strait. Now they would have used the animals for both food and clothing. That's the purpose why they would have hunted animals for food and clothing. And I'm going to share a story. It is always good to observe animals. It is always good to observe animals. Because they have a sense, the animals have a sense of danger. What, yes, a sense of danger. Anyone want to share experience before I share mine? Sir, there's this movie, right? 
yeah. where this um, tsunami was coming and this girl was on this elephant and the mm. elephant led her up to a mountain. All right, good. No, that's Sir, it. yes. Go ahead. Sir, um, before like the whole raining season started, like the a lot of rain that has been happening, I saw a pile of ants like coming inside and they were gathering food. Good. Yes, that's true. And the earthquake. Yes, you are very correct. So these, so ladies. We, we know for sure based on our own experience that it is not very difficult to, to know that the animals have a sense of danger. And you would have mentioned the story about the, the show about the tsunami and also uh, the other student would have mentioned something about the ants, observing all the ants. I you know that ants are insects, right? Or the insects would have... Uh, come inside, especially my house, I realized that before the heavy rain came, a lot of ants were all over the place. And I was wondering, I, I, and I thought originally that it was my son, my two-year-old, who actually was throwing food all over the place, but it was more than that. It was a sense that a lot of rain was actually coming, right? And so we know for sure that we can follow the animals. So we know that this, the theory or the view that the first people followed the animals are not something that is far-fetched. And the story is about the tsunami. Now, there was a great tsunami that happened recently. I can't remember the exact year in somewhere in Asia. And before the tsunami happened, most of the animals would have moved from, from the flat and they would have moved up to the mountain. And people saw the animals moving up and nobody really observed and said, all right, what is, what is happening? Why the animals are moving? Everybody was there still partying and all of that. And the tsunami came and a lot of people died. So it is quite, it is not far-fetched to say, all right, the first people followed animals because they would have, they knew the animals and, ex, and so they were following them for food and also for clothing. There are two theories out there, ladies, and you would have both mentioned it. There are two theories about what the Bering Strait was like. There are two theories. The first one is called the land bridge theory. There are two theories about what the land bridge was like. There are two theories about what the land bridge was like. Two theories, the land bridge theory and the ice bridge theory. The land bridge and the ice bridge theory. The land bridge and the ice bridge theory. Now, the land bridge theory argues that the piece of what is now considered the Bering Strait was a piece of land. While the ice bridge theory says that the area was not just a piece, it's not a piece of land, it was the sea that would have turned ice. And that's how they would have crossed from this area in Asia into North America. Sir, could you repeat that? So the land bridge theory explains, the land bridge theory explains, the land bridge theory explains that the indigenous peoples the land bridge theory explains that the indigenous peoples came across the Bering Strait, came across the Bering Strait, which was a strip of land, 
which was a strip of land that joined North America and Asia. So, sir, where's that piece of land now? For, for, so, according to them, that piece of land would have sunk beneath the ocean. Another view is that there are some tiny, tiny islands between Asia and North America. And so some of the theorists argues or archaeologists argues that they would have crossed along that those small bits of island. Okay. Yes, so that sir. Is, yes, so that sir. Is, so that is the land bridge theory. The ice bridge theory say that the Bering Sea, the Bering Sea, the ice bridge theory said that the Bering Sea was frozen. So the ice bridge theory argues that the Bering Sea was frozen. So there are two different views. Now, if we had time, ladies, because our time has expired, I would have gone into asking you two things. I would have gone into to ask you, which one of the theories do you believe is correct? All right, and we could have debated that. But time has expired on us. So before we go, the first thing that we need to know, ladies, is that the all the people that settled in the americas that came during that time they came at different times so all of them didn't came at once they came at separate times during the ice age and they settled various places in the americas they settled various places in the americas and they would have developed their own culture. So each group, once they settled somewhere, they developed their own culture, although some cultures are going to be very similar. So each settlement had their own social, political, and economic system. And there, if we study, when we study the history, we are going to realize that some of the different groups actually interact with, with each other. They interacted with each other. So those are some of the facts that we are that we need to know. So the first thing, they came at different times during the Ice Age. They settled at various places. They would have developed their own culture. Some of this, and each settlement had their own social, political, and economic system. And some of the groups actually interact with each other. So when we meet again on, so for Wednesday's class, is it for Wednesday's class, which is tomorrow's class, we are not going to have a Zoom class. And no. So what we're going to do is that for tomorrow, we're going to have a Zoom class. I'll move it, this assignment to another day because we didn't get to finish it. So for tomorrow, ladies, we're going to, tomorrow morning, we're going to have so tomorrow morning we are going to have a zoom class so change of schedule we're going to have a zoom class tomorrow morning and then for the class on monday then we will do the you'll do the assignment from the classroom all right yes sir sir could you go back to the fox slides okay no problem Ladies, this is it. 
Sarah, before you go. Yes, go um, ahead. Can you please send this, uh, what do you call this again? This presentation in Google Classroom? No problem. Oh, thank you, sir.